No, no, no. Come on, where is it? Dave, it's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Mold stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, BJ Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, Boise State fans, how we doing? Happy Thursday to you here. Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com. I am dealing with a, a slight cold here, so I apologize for uh, the voice uh, being a little stuffy, not perfect. Also not in our uh, traditional Cutwater studios. As I've said, uh, we are moving. Our house is on the market, so we are uh, staying elsewhere uh, with um, the in-laws for a couple of days. So I uh, apologize for that. Uh, Going to make it down to football practice here shortly. But uh, first, had to get a show. Sometimes on Thursdays, we aren't able to get a show in due to practice, but had to get a uh, BNN Live in today because of the big breaking news last night. Alvaro Cardenas can, uh, committing, announcing his commitment to Boise State. We had hinted at it, teased at it for a couple of days. He is going to join us here in just a couple of minutes. I had a 20-minute interview with him last night. Uh, we taped it pretty late, uh, well after 11 o'clock at night when he was available. Um, but... Uh, Got the interview taped and wanted to play that for you guys uh, this morning. Uh, great stuff from Alvaro. And, uh, you know, I get it. It's not Bronny James. It's not Zach Eady. A couple of you were uh, disappointed that it wasn't maybe a, a bigger, um, you know, commitment. Um, but when you look at Boise State, and if you're a diehard Boise State fan or you know the system, you know the team, and you know the Mountain West, he was literally the missing piece last year. And this is no disrespect to Roddy Anderson, no disrespect to Jace Whiting, but they're completely different players. And how many times last year did we say, man, if Boise State just had a point guard, a true point guard, this team would be 
you know, ranked in the top 25 and, you know, maybe doing big things in the tournament. So uh, I think that Cardenas is a perfect fit for Boise State's offense. Um, he's a pass first point guard, over five assists a game last year. And again, you look at some of the numbers and, and Jay Tuss had some uh, some stats out there. Um, but I, I think that his ability to not turn the ball over, distribute and find others, his uh, savviness, his ability to score at the different levels. He can shot over 38% from three-point range, could get to the rim as well. Um, you know, that's the one knock on Roddy Anderson. And we'll talk about this in a little bit. What does this mean for Roddy Anderson moving forward? But, I mean, the one knock on Roddy Anderson was he's not a great shooter. Can he get there? Yes. But was Roddy Anderson a great shooter last year? The statistics will prove it. He wasn't. Uh, he struggled at the free throw line, struggled from three-point range, and struggled you know, mostly when he got to the rim. He would have great drives and get to the rim and just blow a lot of easy layups. And so um, some of the turnovers at times were very frustrating with Roddy Anderson as well, um, where he would drive into the lane, have no idea what he was doing with the ball, and, and turn, out, turn it over. I mean, again, uh, you just look at it. There was one or two plays a game where Roddy Anderson just kind of made you scratch your head, like what was he thinking there? What was he doing? Um, and you're not going to get any of that from Alvaro Cardenas. Um, he's a, a senior, a fourth year player. And again, behind maybe Darius Brown and Isaiah Stevens, probably the, uh, the third, um, you know, the, the third best, uh, point guard in the league last year. I mean, Donovan Dent certainly is up there. So maybe fourth, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to think off the fly here. He was certainly one of the better point guards, uh, in the mountain West last year. And again, if you look you know, for some teams, it may not be a, a, a huge home run. You know, would this be a massive pickup for a San Diego State? Maybe not. But if you look at Boise State's roster, you look at what they needed, a pass first point guard. Everybody wanted to rip on Max Rice last year for how bad he shot. Uh, again, why did he have such a good year the year before? You had uh, Marcus Shaver setting him up. So I think that part of Max Rice's struggles, part of some of the offensive struggles or him not getting a lot of open looks and not getting a lot of shots. And I think that uh, Alvaro Cardenas, uh, again, who you're going to hear from here in a couple of minutes, uh, is going to do a much better job of creating and, and, and running the offense and finding open shots for uh, his teammates. So uh, he also visited uh, Colorado State, also visited uh, Santa Clara. Um, but uh, again, I apologize if I overhyped this, as some of you said um, but I think that the folks that were overhyped are the same folks that were just looking for a reason to be negative. Um, this was a guy that had a lot of choices, a lot of options. And for him to stay in the Mountain West and come to Boise State, um, again, Roddy Anderson, when he transferred in last year, he had to uh, acclimate himself with the Mountain West, with all the road venues, with all the thing, all the travel. Uh, Alvaro Cardenas has done this for three years. He's played in Extra Mile Arena. He's played in all of these other arenas already. He knows the players in this league. He knows the coaches in this league. I think it is just a massive pickup, in my opinion, to get Alvaro Cardenas. And again, average 13 points, 5.5 assists. Um, if you want to try to downplay it, poo-poo it, that's fine. But if you look at Boise State's roster and what they have coming back, and yes, I do believe Rodney Anderson uh, improved a lot as the season went on. I believe... Um, you know, I believe that he's a guy that that you know can fit on this team, and and you know would would have been fine if he was the point guard next year. But the the style of offense that Boise State plays, it was almost kind of like trying to fit a, a you know round uh, peg into a square hole or something or whatever opposite I guess of that would be a a square peg into a round hole. Um, it, it just didn't quite always seem like it was a perfect fit, and I think Cardenas is much more natural with what how Boise State runs their offense. I think he's the perfect fit. Um, and again, you look at some of the stats out there, and I know Jay Tuss had some of these stats on his Twitter account. Uh, one of two players in Mountain West history with 170 plus assists and less than 65 turnovers. Uh, again, second player or one of two in Mountain West history to have more than 170 assists and less than 65 turnovers in a season. The only other player was Isaiah Stevens uh, two years ago. By the way, last year, uh, Alvaro Cardenas, the only player in America. Again, the only player in America to play over 1,100 minutes and have less than 65 turnovers. Um, and again, also had 170 plus assists last season. So again, you want to look at the stats and things and compare. Um, and again, this is not meant to be just let's you know rip on Roddy Anderson. But when you look at it, 171 assists, I believe it was for Cardenas, 78 for Roddy Anderson. So you're talking about 
almost 100 more assists. And this is also in two less games, by the way. This is also with a much uh, weaker supporting cast, by the way. I mean, uh, San Jose State, guys, they went 2-16 and 16 in the Mountain West last year. They were not good. You know, they had Amy. They had a couple guys. But they were just uh, not that great. Um, and so uh, I think you look at the numbers. Some guys score a lot on bad teams. You know what? That really wasn't Cardenas because did he score? Yes, but he did a lot of other things. 5.5 assists a game on a team that's not very good. That's pretty impressive that you're still finding a way to get more five assists to teammates uh, for a team that went two and 16. You put Alvaro Cardenas and his 5.5 assists on a roster with Omar on a court with Omar Stanley and Tyson Degenhart and Chibuzo Abo. Um, the sky just seems to be the limit for a guy like Alvaro Cardenas. So I think he's a perfect fit for what Boise State needs. And uh, again, is he Bronny James? No, but heck, you could make a case he's a better fit than Bronny James for, for what this team needs right now. So I think Cardenas is a, a home run get for Boise State. Um, and I think that he uh, certainly has a chance to make a massive impact on this team uh, moving forward. I did have two eyes, two sets of eyes. Um, that was not because I know of some other player. Um, I just tried to emphasize that. Maybe I should have just done the, the one set of eyes scale. But uh, as of now, uh, Cardenas is the only player that has committed to Boise State. Um, but, um, and uh, that's the point. He averaged five assists on a crappy team. Yes, so I would think, Seven or eight should be possible on a team like Boise State when you're setting up guys like Degenhard and Stanley. And um, he's a solid defender. He's not the greatest defender of all time, but I think he's a solid defender and, and he'll be he'll be uh, fine there. Um, and again, some folks were asking, I asked him in the interview, and again, you're going to hear it in a couple minutes. Some folks were uh, that were not happy with the move and trying to poo-poo it last night were mentioning the fact that he was scoreless uh, when they played in Boise. Um, he didn't play the game before he tried to play in Boise. He was still very sick. He told me he lost 17 pounds in a two week stretch, uh, because he was just so sick and throwing up and he should not have played in Boise. He said like three times, I don't want to make excuses, but I think it was pretty obvious that we did not see a hundred percent Alvaro Cardenas. Uh, when he came to Boise uh, this past season, he was, had missed the last game. And again, didn't play very good in the next two games either. And he said over a four game stretch, he lost 17 pounds, um, Due to uh, due to his um, you know uh, sickness there, and that was part of the reason that he did not play as well in Boise. So I would not put too much stock into the game the uh, game that uh, he had in Boise where he did not score because he was well less than 100. percent I would look at the other 30 games where he averaged well over 13 points a game, well over five assists a game, and uh, again you look at some of the stats that uh, Jay Tuss put out there, and and we've uh, looked at uh, again one of the top players in the country. Here's another one: only four players in the NCAA last year. Had 170 plus assists, a uh, field goal percentage of 45 percent, three point percentage of 38 percent, and an 80 percent plus free throw percentage. Those guys were Isaiah Stevens, Tyler Kolek, KJ Simpson, and Alvaro Cardenas. So uh, again, four um, uh, four players, all you know, national, you know, conference, all conference type guys, player of the year in their conference type guys, and. Uh, Alvaro Cardenas. So um, I get it. It's San Jose State. Would you have been happier with like the seventh man from Kentucky or Kansas or Duke or something? Uh, I just think that it's San Jose State. Some people are maybe not as excited about this. But again, I'm telling you, if you watch the Mountain West, if you watch Boise State, they truly needed a, uh, a, a player of this caliber. And so I think he's a bigger get for a team like Boise State than maybe he would have get uh, in some other uh, in some other areas. So we're going to hear from him in a minute. Now, again, what does this mean for Roddy Anderson? I don't know. Can they play together? Can they make this work? Can Roddy Anderson, um, you know, be out there together with him some? Can they, you know, keep uh, keep each other fresh? Yes. Um, but again, um, you know, again, no disrespect to Roddy Anderson. The stats prove it. He's not the greatest shooter. Um, and I'm not sure you want Roddy Anderson at your two guard when teams were pretty much leaving him wide open last year from three point range. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen with, with this. Does Roddy Anderson get you know frustrated and decide to leave? Um, maybe. Do they try to make this work somehow? Does Roddy Anderson make big improvements in his shooting over the offseason? Um, potentially. I mean, you want to get as many talented players as you can. So if Roddy Anderson wants to stay, I certainly think that can be a positive uh, for Boise State. But 
Uh, if he were to look elsewhere, I mean, that just opens up another spot and Cardenas comes in again. He also played over 35 minutes a game last year. Um, so, uh, again, you're talking about a durable guy who was out there on the court, barely came off the court last year, 35 plus minutes a game last year for Cardenas. So you got Chris Lockett coming in. If you play Cardenas, you know, 32, 33 minutes, let Chris Lockett get six, seven minutes. Um, you don't necessarily have a spot or need a, a guy like Roddy Anderson potentially. Cause again, I'm just not sure. Can they play together some? Yes, and you're going to hear that in the interview, but is it, Roddy Anderson is not your typical number two type guard on this team. So um, make no mistake that Cardenas is the one, and then I think they figure things out with Roddy Anderson. So I don't know what the status is of Roddy Anderson. Um, we'll have to find that out here uh, moving forward. Uh, any other news on the other open scholarships? Um, not yet. Uh, Boise State does have two uh, spots left. Uh, again, they have two more scholarships. Uh, they definitely want a center, um, whether that's a starting center um, or a you know sixth man, Cam Martin type guy. I don't know. Um, I also think this is an opportunity where you get a younger center, someone that's a freshman or sophomore, and it's going to have a couple years left. Um, I think that's an option because, let's face it, after this season, you're going to lose Cardenas, Stanley, Degenhart, Abo. That's a lot of guys to uh, to lose potentially after this season. So. If you could get a younger center that could come in and be ready to be a major contributor in two years, uh, that would be an option. So they've got uh, – and excuse me, I am dealing with a little bit of a cold here, as I said earlier in the show. Um, but I will say this. They have a couple of options. They can play Roddy at the two, um, Abo at the three, Degenhardt at the four, Stanley at the five, and, and obviously Cardenas at the one. Or um, they could uh, go get a starting center. Go go tell a starting center in the portal that, you know, you got a chance to start here and play major minutes – and if you get a center, you put Stanley at the four, Degenhardt at the three, Abo at the two, and then Cardenas at the one. I mean, if you get two starting caliber players to go along with Abo, Stanley, and Degenhardt, I mean, Boise State was already probably the favorite in the Mountain West right now, at least with the way the rosters are. And if you have a chance to add another starting caliber player in the portal at center, uh, I think Abo could be your two. Um, I mean, let's be honest, Abo or you know, Anderson at the two, you, you probably, I mean, you, you take Abo there. I mean, he's a much better shooter. Um, again, I like a lot of the things that Roddy Anderson does. He got a lot better as the season went on. He probably single-handedly won them the San Diego State game at Viejas Arena. For the most part, played pretty well in that Colorado game in terms of his scoring. Did have a very poor turnover late that was costly. And then also played 38 minutes and had no assists in that game. So um, I, I do believe Roddy Anderson is, you know, improved and got a lot better. Um, but again, you, you can't be a two guard and shoot as poorly from the field as he did last year. So he's going to have to make some significant improvements in his shot, which I think he can. And Boise State thought that he could when he got here because he didn't shoot it great the year before either. Um, but, uh, you know, that that needs to happen. You need to have um, Anderson improve his shooting um, if he's going to be your two guard. So I think you can mix it and match it and do a lot of different things. Like I said, whether you play them together, whether you go get another center, they have a lot of options right here uh, for uh, what, what could potentially happen uh, for uh, Boise State and this lineup. So uh, super excited to see what happens. Again, I think it's a very big pickup. They have, at least, they have two scholarships left. At least one of them, they want to go to a, a center that can contribute. And uh, I think that uh, that... Uh, could be uh, another key you know, game changer. I mean, you're already seeing uh, a couple of people, uh, the Field of 68, Andy Katz, some other folks have already have Boise State in their preseason top 25. And again, this stuff changes a lot with all the additions and all the roster changes. There's a ton of uh, things that are going to change here moving forward. But to already have Boise State right now as a top 25 team in, in multiple publications, and that was before they got Cardenas, um, I think you're going to start to see a lot of hype around Boise State this offseason, and there's a, a decent chance they could be a preseason top 25 team going into next season. And I also think if they're able to add a center that moves the needle a little bit, it could be a, an absolute game changer uh, for this team. Okay, a 20-minute interview with Alvaro Cardenas, his first interview since committing to Boise State. Um, we're going to play that here in just a second, but first I want to tell you, about a couple of our sponsors, Cutwater Spirits, more than 35 flavors of premixed premium cocktails. You can pick one up at your local ghost grass station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate. Rowpaint.com, those concrete coatings right now, whether it's your garage, your back patio, your basement, turn that ugly looking concrete slab uh, into a thing of beauty in one day with Rowpaint.com. They can also do uh, interior, exterior paintings, commercial, industrial, residential, you name it. Check them out, Rowpaint.com. 
Com. Idaho Central Credit Union. I just wish the Reigns family had made the switch earlier to ICCU. Uh, they, I, I, I know they're a sponsor, but I truly believe it when I say it, that uh, we should have done it earlier. It's so easy. Their online mobile banking is the easiest I've ever used. And uh, just so thankful that we made the switch after we signed on uh, with Idaho Central Credit Union. So ICCU.com. There's a branch pretty much on every corner. Make the switch today. ICCU. Dot com. Ridley's Family Markets, 14 Idaho locations. Love that CUNA location. Uh, well worth the uh, the trip south there. So check them out. ShopRidley's.com. They got uh, great savings up to 40% off at the checkout line with the new uh, Shop Ridley's app. And again, you can find a location near you at ShopRidley's.com. Bowser Real Estate, we're uh, selling our home. It went on the market yesterday. I tweeted it out yesterday. And folks were joking about me putting my address out there. I'm going to get some weird visitors or packages. We're not living there anymore, so feel free. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I know you, most of you were kidding, but um, we're looking to sell our home. we got a couple of showings today, and, and it's just been a great process with Bowser Real Estate. And by the way, we're not leaving the area. We're just trying to upgrade a little bit. We've had that house 10 years with no kids, and uh, now I work from home, and we got two kids and just need a little bigger place. So uh, Bowser Real Estate, I have uh, found out firsthand why they're the number one realtor in the Treasure Valley. BowserRealEstate.com. Check them out. Number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley, Matt, Kelly, Ridley, their whole team have just been great to work with. And uh, again, I'm finding out firsthand just why um, Matt Bowser is as successful as he is. Personal attention, the detail, it's all just uh, really been impressive to watch. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home, doesn't matter the size, Matt Bowser and his team can take care of you. Check them out at BowserRealEstate.com. All right. Alvaro Cardenas, I did this interview last night. Just a uh, brief heads up. His Wi-Fi was not great. So you can hear his audio perfect, which is the most important thing. Um, but the audio doesn't necessarily line up with his mouth moving. Um, we tried it a couple of times to reset it and restart it. And I don't know what the problem was. Um, but his audio is about a second or two behind uh, his uh, or, or ahead of his mouth moving. Um, he's frozen at times. Um, it's, it is what it is. He was in a San Jose state dorm room. Hopefully they have better Wi-Fi for him once he gets to Boise state. Um, but the audio is perfect. And that's the most important thing that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to play in terms of the, uh, Alvaro Cardenas interview. So heads up, you're not going to be able to see him as clearly and as perfectly as, as you do, uh, this, uh, you know, gorgeous looking face right here. Um, but, uh, we made it work and the audio is fine and that's all that matters in terms of of uh, hearing from Alvaro Cardenas. So, uh, by the way, uh, quick shout out, Bronco Nation News Golf Tournament, May 31st. We'd love to have you. Ropaint.com, ICCU, our title sponsors. Foursomes are filling up fast. We only have about seven foursomes left for the morning. We have some options left in the afternoon. 8.30 start in the morning, 1.30 start in the afternoon, lunch in the middle. So uh, please make plans to join us. Don't wait, though. This is going to sell out. We're benefiting the Idaho Youth Sports Commission. Uh, again, uh, sign up now, Timberstone Golf Course, May 31st. And um, we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Spencer Danielson is going to be out there, Tyson Degenhardt, a lot of the coaches. Mike Burns has uh, already uh, committed to joining us as well. So May 31st, sign up now, bronconationnews.com slash golf. Or you can uh, email me, reigns at bronconationnews.com. All right, welcome on back, Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. The big news, we've been talking about it and uh, excited to bring him on and hear from uh, the man himself about his decision to transfer to Boise State. We bring on Alvaro Cardenas. And Alvaro, uh, congratulations, man. Uh, you got Bronco Nation buzzing with your decision to transfer to Boise State. Uh, how's it feel, man? It was amazing. It feels great to be a Bronco. What, what, uh, take us back to the beginning, man, when you decided to enter your name in the transfer portal, you know, who reached out first from Boise state, how did the communication start? And, and, uh, I know you came for a visit. Just, just take us through the process here. Yeah. Um, so basically I entered the portal, um, just cause I was kind of looking for a different experience for my last year. Um, obviously it wasn't the easiest year for, for myself and the team at SESU, um, but I still have a lot of love for the coaches, for Coach Miles and the coaching staff. They're the first uh, people that uh, gave me a chance. I uh, had no offers coming out of high school and prep school, so I'm always going to be grateful for them. Um, but I think it was time for me to go in a different direction and look for something different and be part of a winning culture and, and you know, just kind of be able to be myself and impact winning at the highest level. So um yeah put my name in the portal and coach mike burns was the first one to reach out to me um and 
this was happening uh, the day before you guys played um, in the tournament. And well, obviously, after you guys lost, he he got a, on a plane. And as soon as he landed on Boise, the next day he was at San Jose having lunch with me. Um, so that kind of showed me from the beginning the interest that the Boise showed and 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 that was just the first step of, of my recruitment. And after that, we just kept communicating. Um, they did a really good good job recruiting me and showed me how much they wanted me to be there uh, and the need that they, they needed for a, for a point guard like me. Um, and then, yeah, we scheduled a visit uh, right before the dead period. Um, and the visit went great. Um, I had talked to Coach Coach Rice before as well. And and yeah, it kind of showed me that that was that was the place to go and the place where I could keep growing as a player, but also impact winning, which is what it's all about. I had heard you'd also visited Colorado State. Uh, I mean, who, who what other schools were you looking at here? Yeah, um, so basically my top three at the end was Santa Clara, Colorado State, and and Boise State. Um, I visited Santa Clara on somewhat on an official visit because it's right here around the corner. Um, and then I visited Colorado State. It was also a good visit, but um, yeah, it was just a tough decision for me to make because I felt like those three places, um, which I cut down to, were really good options for me. But at the end of the day, I thought Boise was, uh, yeah, just a school that did the best job recruiting me and showed the most interest. And and I just thought it was the best opportunity for myself and be part of a, obviously a winning and a winning program. Yeah, what, what was it about um, you know, your visit or your game that, that fits their style of offense? Or just, well, why do you think Boise State was the best fit for your last year here? Yeah, well, I think, um, if I'm being honest, I, I feel like they've needed, uh, they've been in need of a true point guard. Um, and that's just what I've done my whole life. I've, I'm a pass first guy. That's just, um, I think I, I make others around me better. And that's just kind of what I do. I just, like to get others involved. And at the same time, I feel like I can score pretty well as, uh, as well. Um, so yeah, that was that was the main thing. I thought uh, Coach Rice kind of wanted to play it a little bit more upbeat tempo and uh, he wanted somebody to um, to kind of be able to create for others. And you guys have amazing players like Tyson Dagan Hart and Stan Lee and, and Chibuzo Agua. And I feel like all of those guys will kind of benefit from playing with a player like me who's just going to be able to find them good looks. And I'll, I'm really excited to, you know, just be able to play with guys of that caliber. And there are such good players and, and it's just kind of make their life a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, no disrespect to any of the players you've played with in the past, but obviously, obviously, you guys have struggled a little bit there. You went two and sixteen in the league this year. I mean, um, getting a chance to to surround yourself with a winning culture, a winning team, and players like you said that that you know of that caliber. I mean, do you think that's going to bring out an an even better side of your game that that we haven't even seen yet? Yeah, and and that's one of the main things that I was looking for when I when I made this decision to go into the portal. Right, it was. Um, just want to be part of a really good team and play with uh, really good players so that I can also shine and, and improve my game because I feel like that would help me a lot. And I don't just plan on, on having the same year I had. I feel like I've had a pretty good improvement every single year that I've been here in America. It took me a little bit to figure it out um, coming from Europe and, and you know, physically I, it was an adjustment. But um, I feel like I've made improvements every year and I plan on doing this the same thing this year, right? I, I plan on showing the best version of myself. And at the same time, when I do that, I feel like I impact winning and I can show, and I can just, like I said, help these guys get some better looks and, and just help the team win. Now you had a heck of a year, but uh, you came to Boise and you were held scoreless uh, in that game. And I understand yeah. you were still dealing with some physical stuff. Um, what, what was going on and, and how less than 100% were you when you came to Boise? Yeah, so actually, well, I don't like making excuses. I had a bad game, but I didn't play the game before at Wyoming, and I actually lost like 17 pounds um, during that that four game span. The game at Wyoming, obviously, I, I couldn't play. I tried to warm up, but it was impossible. Um, at Boise, I obviously wasn't feeling good at all. Um, and then the game after UNLV and San Diego State, I was still not UNLV, uh, Nevada and San Diego State. I still was feeling really bad. Um, and that was the first game I missed my three years in college, right? But but yeah, I tried to play through it. I know the team needed me, and obviously it wasn't my game. And that's kind of why I was surprised a little bit that Boise reached out to me because I knew I didn't play my best either either of those two games. Um, 
but that kind of showed me how much they valued me and the film that they had watched and, and that they knew what type of player I was. Um, so it was great. So you were just, you were just sick then? Yeah, I was just really sick, but okay. Yeah, no excuses. Well, I had to play better. What um, you know, in, in terms of just your game, you mentioned being a pass first guy, a true point guard guy. What have they told you about kind of your role? And and obviously Roddy Anderson, this guy that started you know last year, is is at least yeah. as of now still on this roster. Um, I mean, what what you know, some fans kind of see mm -hmm. this and say, how is this going to work? Uh, what what have they kind of told you about your role and yeah. whether or not anything's going on with with Roddy or or how that's going to work? Well, I'm not. I'm not the coach. I can't say what's going to happen with with Roddy or what what's um, you know what the situation is going to be like. But um, I decided to come to Boise because I feel like I'm going to have a pretty big role, uh, kind of a similar role that I had at San, at San Jose State, where um, probably going to start and just you know just be able to uh, play my game. And one of the things Coach Rice was um, you know just kept telling me is he wants me to be myself. He wants me to. Um, play like I play, um, and because he knows that when I do that, I can I'm, I can be really effective and help the team. And he wants to put me in positions to be successful. He wants to uh, run a lot of pick and roll, which is something that I that I mentioned to him during my recruiting process. Because obviously Boise wasn't the team that did that the most this year um, because of the personnel or whatever it was. So yeah, the situation with Roddy, I'm not the one to talk about that. Um, I do think we could share the court together. I think he's a really good player, really talented, really physical, and a great defender. Um, so I'm sure we could work together, play at the same time. Um, and, you know, it's hard to come to the Mountain West. Your first year is always hard, but I think he's got a great potential, and, and, and he showed it his first year at San Diego. What about just staying in the league here? Is that going to be weird at all for you? And, and obviously you've already been to a lot of these venues. Mm -hmm. You've been to all these places that had to have helped, I guess, and it's going to help you knowing a lot of these players and these venues. And you've played in Extra yeah. Mile Arena. I think they had ten or 11,000 fans uh, this year when they played you guys. I mean, mm -hmm. just, just your, your thoughts on, on, I guess, the uniqueness of, of uh, staying in the league here and how that might help you. Yeah, well, obviously since, since the first uh, time I played in the Mountain West, I just fell in love with the conference. And while at first I was a little bit reluctant to stay because, you know, just I, I it felt a little bit weird. Um, but at the same time, uh, I decided I talked with my dad, uh, who's a big supporter in this this process. And and we just realized, like, that doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, you got to look for yourself and what the best opportunity is. And we had some good opportunities in the Mountain West. And and, you know, at the same time, I love the league. Six teams to the to the tournament this year. So it's like really exciting um you play in amazing in amazing venues like you said um here at boise like you said it was eleven thousand fans it was it was just amazing to be in that in that environment that i didn't really experience when i was at san jose because you know it's it's not the same um and and yeah that was also one of the reasons why i kind of wanted to um you know just change and do something different yeah i was gonna ask you i mean if, if you thought about what that's going to be like playing in front of a packed house pretty much every home game now and and yeah. uh, having that support and that home court advantage that you <laughs> you've never really had and and also just the facilities too not not to speak negatively towards san jose state yeah. i know they're trying to make some improvements but uh whether it be the locker room and some of the practice facilities and and the game arena obviously um well, what would you make of boise state's facilities and, and the upgrade you're going to be getting here for your last year yeah, man, I'm I'm super excited. The facilities are incredible. The fan base is incredible. Um, I've received already a lot of support since I posted on Twitter about it. Um, and I'm just super excited to be able to like go on this journey and be able to play in front of a packed arena. Like I've I've never done that, and I feel like I've actually played better on the road when when the fans are like streaming at you. But that's also because we never really had fans in San Jose State. Not to say anything bad about them. Like I said, I, I love the program. I love the coaches. But that's just the reality of it. Um, and yeah, so I'm super excited to just kind of feel the energy in the arena and I can't wait to play our first game and, you know, how it's going to be jumping. <clears throat> so what's the, what's the potential for this team, man? I know they still have two scholarships left and I know they're looking for a center and I'm sure they've kind of laid out their plan with you for what they mm -hmm. hope to do with this roster. But, um, I mean, you, you mentioned the players coming back and that's not even mentioned in, you know, Meadow and Keen and some of the guys off the bench they really like and some kids that redshirted last year. I mean, what, what uh, for fans watching this man? Uh, what, what's the potential? You guys are going to be one of the top teams, obviously, probably preseason in the Mountain West. But I mean, what what are you uh, hoping yeah. to come in and do here and, and do as a team? 
Yeah, I mean, the the roster is looking amazing, uh, and I'm sure they'll add another big that can contribute. But really, the sky is the limit, and we just got to take it day by day. But I'm super excited for um, for what this team can do. Obviously, the goal is is to win the Mountain West Conference, and then after that, it's just going to be win games in the tournament and go as far as we can go, right? And that's going to depend on the work that we put in every day. But I think the sky is the limit, and it's time to, um, to get that first win in the NCAA tournament. I think this team can do it. I was going to ask you about that. Obviously, I was. Gonna, I wondered if you were aware of that, and, and you answered my question. There, you are. Yeah. But to zero and ten in the tournament, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, after that Colorado loss, that's been a, a talking point here the last couple of weeks. I mean, is that a big deal to you to be a part of history and hopefully come in and change that next year and get that first win? Yeah, exactly. I feel like it's a huge opportunity to make to make history here at Boise State, and and I know the fans and. And you know the program around it, and and everyone that supports Boise deserves it. And I think, um, you know, I've I've met some of the guys, some of the players, and and they all think the same way. They're all um, super committed to putting putting work in and and just being able to you know do it for the city of uh, the city of Boise and just get not just one win in the tournament, but as many as you can, you know. And and I think, like I said, this team has the potential to do it, as we can make history. So what's your plan? There's the uh, first uh, part. I got a couple more questions left for Roddy. We'll get to that in a second. Again, I apologize at the uh, or uh, Alvaro, not Roddy, but I apologize. The Wi-Fi is not, was not great, as I said. Uh, I know somebody joked, "Tech capital of the world." And they don't have great Wi-Fi, but uh, you can hear them, and that's the most important part. I know it's a little grainy, and the, and the video is not lining up with the audio, so I apologize for that. But uh, you heard him there. He knows Boise State has uh, yet to win an NCAA tournament game. He says this is the team that can make history, that can do it. And I get it. I know every year that's a talking point. Every transfer, Cam Martin said it last year. I mean, I get it. But um, it does seem like he's aware of that and and wants to go on a run with his team and and make history. Uh, very well-spoken kid, uh, and I think he's done a, a, did a really nice job. So we're going to hear the rest of the interview here in just a second. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about a couple more sponsors. Lithia Ford of Boise, LithiaFordBoise.com. They have uh, a cool thing where you can view their full inventory of vehicles online. That's what the Reigns family did. We, we found two or three we liked. Went on in, knew which couple we already wanted to test drive, made the process so much faster and easier. We'd already done the research. Like the vehicle, we were on our way in a couple of hours. So check them out, Lithia Ford Boise at LithiaFordBoise.com. Taco Bell, they're hiring, and they'll give you half your wages the very next day after your shift. They will also give you free food while you work. You can't beat that. TacoBellWorks.com, the SON management group, the Nicolason family. They donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to Boise State to fund student scholarships. So check them out, and uh, next time you're looking for a meal, uh, make it a local Treasure Valley freestanding Taco Bell. The Blue and Orange Store, they got uh, all kinds of deals going on right now. The Blue and Orange Store.com. I saw the Chibuzo Abo NIL shirts are like half off right now. So check them out. The Blue and Orange Store.com. Free shipping, any order over $40. Or the Blue and Orange Store right there, the second floor next to uh, Pro Image in the Boise Town Square Mall. You can go in there, a full store uh, full of nothing but Boise State gear. It's pretty incredible. So check them out. The Blue and Orange Store, the Blue and Orange Store.com. You're looking to get into the trucking industry. Uh, it's a booming industry right now. Let TranscompService.com help you out. All the permits, overweight, DOT, everything you need to get out there towing that first load in no time. They can help you out and do it. 75% of folks that go out of business uh, do it themselves. So let uh, let Transcomp Service take care of it. The professionals will get you out there on the open road in no time. Check them out. Transcomp Service. Dot com Bronco Brew Coffee Bronco Brew dot Coffee check them out they are they're uh, helping out what you're helping out Boise State if you purchase coffee from them they're a sponsor at Boise State they also donate money to the NIL game at Boise State you can go on their website choose an athlete of your choice and donate some of the money from your bag of coffee right to them it's fresh roasted to order coffee and in many instances it's at your doorstep 24 hours after you order it after it's brewed at Bronco Brew Coffee check them out Bronco Brew Coffee broncobrew.coffee. And again, we'll get back to uh, Alvaro Cardenas in just a second. Leanfeastmeridian.com. Check them out as well. We appreciate their support of Bronco Nation News. Healthy eating. Go in there. Tell you heard them about it on BNN. They'll hook you up with a discount. And uh, leanfeastmeridian.com. That website is wrong. It's leanfeastmeridian.com. It's right there at Eagle Road and Stick, ironically next to a five guys. Check them out. Go in there. You can get one meal for lunch that day. You can get 10 meals all different, all the same, whatever you want. There's 10,000 combinations. It's all fresh, not frozen. And again, it's all customizable. You choose the meat you want. You choose the side. You choose the veggie. They make it right there for you. And then again, uh, two minutes in the microwave, you're eating steak and shrimp for lunch, a healthy uh, a healthy meal. So check them out, 
leanfeastmeridian.com and our final sponsor here, Timberstone Golf Course, playtimberstone.com. Make sure you check them out, playtimberstone.com. Uh, they got the new carts, the new water system, a ton of great stuff going on at Timberstone. That's where we'll be May 31st for our golf tournament. Again, email me, reigns at bronconationnews.com if you want in. Uh, Bronco at Nation News Golf Tournament at Timberstone Golf Course. Weather's starting to warm up. Perfect time. It's well worth the drive. Everyone says, oh, Caldwell's so far. It's not. It's worth it. It's a beautiful course, one of the best in the Valley. Check them out, playtimberstone.com. All right, let's get to part two, our interview, Alvaro Cardenas. Uh, we got about five minutes or so left with it, a couple of good things to get to. Here is Alvaro Cardenas, part two of our interview that we did last night. Here he is, your newest member of uh, Bronco Nation, Alvaro Cardenas. And then in terms of uh, finishing up school there, and, and then um, we, when do you plan yeah. to, to make your way to up to Boise? Yeah. Uh, so probably I'll finish uh, my final exams here at San Jose. Um, and then I'll probably take some time, go back home, work out over there with my family that I haven't seen in a long time. And then after that, as soon as summer workout starts, I'll be I'll be at Boise. So it's going to be at the beginning of June, probably. And are you, are you a type of guy that uh, when we're walking by and we hear the basketball bouncing in the in the gym, no matter what time of day or night, we can peek in and you're probably in there? I mean, what's your kind of work ethic and what do you hope to, to bring in terms of a, a – I know you're a new player, but in terms of a leadership role and being a senior here, uh, what do you hope to bring from that aspect to this team? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the main reasons why uh, the coaches reach out to me because they look for very specific guys. And if you not, you've asked anybody around me, I don't want to brag or anything. But that's just what I do. I put in a lot of work. Um, that's basically my whole life. I just, I'm just, I just live in the gym, um, and I feel like uh, the, the results kind of speak for themselves. And the jump that I've had each year just kind of show that work pays off. Um, so yeah, you'll probably hear me late at night, earlier in the morning. Um, if you come by the gym, I'll be there working out and shooting, and you know all that good stuff. But but yeah. I know you'd already been to Boise, obviously, to play a game, but you don't get to do much. What 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 did you make of your visit in the in the city here? Yeah, well, um, it's true that we didn't get to do much at Boise, but after the visit, I just I just find a really nice city. The downtown area is super nice. Uh, I'm also a big fan of like just going on hikes and nature, and the rivers right there along campus. So it was just it was just really cool, and a lot of people were saying good things about the city. Um, I actually. Uh, played with Thomas Brobley back in the day in Spain. He was playing in Leb Gold, um, and I talked to him about it as well. He's he's a great guy. Um, he was telling me a lot of good things about Boise, so I'm I'm super excited to, you know, just live in the city and kind of explore all the little things that it has. I saw he retweeted it. He was all pumped on social media. I saw that uh, Thomas Bro playing yeah. former Bronco doing good things. Uh, have, have you mm -hmm. thought about what it's going to be like? Unfortunately, I mean, going back and having to play a game at the uh, you know, they're, they're in San Jose at some point next season? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I left a lot of amazing people here at San Jose, uh, some of my best friends that I met along the way, um, the coaching staff. And, and you know, it was it, it was it was a little – it was sad, obviously, when I had the end-of-the-year meeting and I told Coach Miles what I planned on doing. Um, but, yeah, it will be a little bit – you know, it will be a little bit weird to come back but and be on the opposite side. Uh, but at the same time, it's good because I'll have a chance to, you know, just be able to see all my um, my teammates and my friends that I made over the last three years. So I'm excited for that as well. And what are you studying in school or what's your goal? I know you want to play basketball for a long time, but for fans that don't know you very well here in Boise, what, what do you like away from the court? What do you like to do for fun? You mentioned the hiking and stuff, but uh, what, what are you studying in school? What are your career goals after basketball? Just tell us a little bit about yourself away from the game of basketball. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I really enjoy my off days. I try to at least once a week just, um, you know, just work out in the morning and then leave and kind of just explore nature a little bit, go on hikes. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've ser I used to serve back in the day, snowboard, all that, all that cool stuff outdoors. Um, it was kind of what I did with my parents and my brother. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's basically it. You can, uh, the bogus basin, man. Oh, you, you talk snowboard. about my best. It's 45 minutes from downtown, degree. man. You can get up there on the slopes. Uh, probably Coach Rice don't want you doing that during the season, though. You may have to wait till after the season or something. No. But, uh, I mean, it's 45 minutes away. And, I mean, Coach Rice claims to be a big fisherman, too. I don't know if you fish at all, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe Coach can get you out there on the river and uh, do some fishing as well. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he told me about it, and obviously I haven't snowboarded in a long time because you know it's risky. But yeah. but yeah, and also going back to uh, you asked me what my degree is. I'm a kinesiology major, so you guys have a kin program here at Boise State as well, so that would be perfect. Um, and you know, I just really enjoy learning about the human body and 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 that type of stuff. But honestly, I think after I'm done with playing basketball in my professional career, uh, which I hope will last a long time. Uh, I'm probably going to go into coaching. That's something that I have a lot of passion for, and um, and I think I'll be good at it as well. F final question or two for you, and we appreciate your time, Alvaro. I mean, a, a lot of people talk about mm -hmm. international players, and you're not eligible to get NIL money, but I know that's changed a little bit. Well, what are the rules with that, and and yep. are you able to? Are you hoping to be able to at all get <clears throat> into that at, at Boise State? And I don't know if that was part of your recruitment or not, but I know that the rules are changing a little bit. Um, what what is the current status of of international players and NIL? Yeah, so um, international players, it becomes a little bit harder because you can get NIL money, but what you you need to do it outside the United States. So I did get some NIL money, and what I'll do, I'll just run a camp uh, somewhere back home in my city, and that's uh, that's the way to do it. That's how everybody does it, um, kind of in a different way, but you definitely have to be outside the United States. But at the same time, we're at a disadvantage, obviously, compared to the to American guys because – we can sign deals with brands and stuff like that. So you kind of, you know, just um, lose out on a lot of money and 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 that's kind of uh, a bummer. But, you know, Zach Eady talked about it the other day, like how he's just losing a lot of money because he would be making millions if he was able to sign with all these brands. But since he's on a student visa, he can't do it. Right. So uh, it sucks. But at the same time, Boise has done a great job of finding a way to give me some NIL money. And, and we're we for sure going to do that. And final thing, what, what's your uh, – I mean, I'm sure fans are already fired up to be listening to this and hearing you talk and looking at your stats and your highlight videos and everything, but what's your, uh, I guess, final message here after this interview to, to Bronco Nation and the fans and everybody in Boise just about uh, what they're going to see from you and this team and your excitement level to, to join the and play in front of the fans here uh, coming up next season? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway that I've seen from being around the coaches and the players is that this is a great group that's really committed to winning. Uh, they work really hard and they all have a common goal, a common goal in mind. It's not selfish people. They're all just, you know, they, we want to make history. We want to um, get those wins in the tournament. We go as far as we can go without putting the limit on ourselves. So I'm just excited to, you know, get to be around the guys a little bit more and get to know each other and, and get to work and play in front of, one of some of the best fans in the country. Well, we appreciate your time, man, giving us 20 minutes here. And I know fans are super excited. And and uh, you're, you're a very well-spoken young man, obviously a heck of a player on the court, and excited to uh, get to know you up here in Boise and see you play, man. So good luck finishing up uh, school there in uh, San Jose. And, and uh, safe travels. Have fun back home with the family. And when you get to Boise, man, it's going to be a heck of a year. Looking forward to seeing what else they do to that roster. And, and uh, fans are super excited, man. This is going to be a fun year. And uh, looking forward to seeing you, man. Thanks so much for your time. Of course. Thanks for having me here. Go Broncos. <clears throat> there he is. Uh, we appreciate uh, Alvaro Cardenas for joining us on Bronco Nation News. Again, we taped the interview last night. Again, apologize. The Wi-Fi was not perfect on his end, but you could hear him perfectly, and that's all that mattered. And um, seems like a very well-spoken young man. Um, you know, being from overseas, his English was much better than I expected it to be. And, and um Super excited. Excuse me. Uh, dealing with the cold, as I said. But uh, super excited for what he brings to this team and the potential. And and they're not done. Now we turn to what's next. What has happened to Roddy Anderson? Where else do they look to improve the roster? And uh, what do they do with the two scholarships remaining? They need a center, obviously. Um, but uh, we'll see if that's a starting caliber center, if that's a sixth man. A lot of different pieces, a lot of different options right now for Boise State. And uh, we'll see how they put it together. But no doubt. Uh, at least to this point, one of the bigger portal additions in the Mountain West, according to BartTorvik.com. Bart Torvik is uh, right behind Ken Palm. is kind of the number two guy in terms of analytics and things. Uh, I know Jay Tuss put it out there on Twitter as well. Um, Boise State already had three of the top four returning players, according to BartTorvik.com's player rankings. And now you add in Cardenas, who is number eight in the conference in terms of returning players as of now. Um uh, you're talking about four of the top eight players in the conference from last year that are back all on Boise State at this point. So things can change. The roster can change. 
And uh, obviously, uh, to this point, Boise State's putting together a loaded roster that should be a lot of fun uh, next season. I want to appreciate everybody, and thank you for subscribing. Um, those of you that are paying subscribers, uh, you help uh, make these shows possible. Uh, truly appreciate you. Uh, you see the promo code at the bottom of the screen, BNN50 deal. If you're not a paying subscriber, hopefully that interview and what we're doing at BNN will uh, persuade you to uh, soon subscribe. We'd love to have your support. And uh, again, BNN50 deal takes $20 off your first year and you get a full year of coverage uh, for $50. Um, and that's at uh, bronconationnews.com. You just click on the register subscribe button at the top. And then uh, again, it's just 50 bucks for a full year, or you can pay the monthly option, $6.99 as well. We have great member benefits. You get a daily email, um, you get uh, exclusive content and shows and things. And we're going to continue to push more content and uh, potentially even some pre or post game shows to subscriber only uh, as we move forward into football season. So if you don't want to miss any of the content, if you don't want to miss any uh, of our coverage, um, we would please ask that you just uh, help us out, keep this thing rolling, uh, $50 at bronconationnews.com. And again, another way to help is to go support the sponsors. Uh, go eat at Taco Bell. Uh, switch out your banking over to ICCU. Use row painting for your uh, painting needs. Uh, go buy some stuff at the blue and orange store. And when you do, please tell the uh, so the uh, sponsors uh, that you're, you're, that you're uh, you know, supporting them because of their support of Bronco Nation News. So this is a, a free show in large part because of our sponsors, uh, Lithia Ford and all the great sponsors we have. So if there is a way that you can go buy some cut waters and take a picture on social media and tag us and let us let us show that to the advertisers, tag the advertisers. Anytime you use the, you know, we had someone buy a car. I think Robbie Robinson bought a car from Lithia Ford and tagged them, uh, tagged uh, BNN and Lithia in the post. And that's a great way for them to uh, see that their advertising is working. So um, quick little sales pitch there. If there's any way you can support the sponsors, we'd appreciate it. Please, um, they're not going to want to keep sponsoring us, and these shows won't be free anymore if we uh, can't get uh, enough revenue from the sponsors to keep these free. And that means uh, you showing the sponsors that their advertising is working and that it's worth it. So any little thing helps, and we would certainly appreciate that at uh, Bronco Nation News and, and uh, helping us out. So thank you guys for the kind words. Football practice is going on right now. I believe it's practice 11. I'm going to hurry over there and uh, watch the second half of practice. We're interviewing Eric Chenander and Maddox Madsen and some other players today after practice. So we'll have full um, full interviews up on the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribing to YouTube, you need to get over there right now because that's where we post all of our uh, press conference videos, highlights, all kinds of stuff. Uh, YouTube.com slash Bronco Nation News. We'll have uh, Maddox Madsen, his first interview in a long time going up there. Uh, we'll have Eric Chenander. A lot of other uh, great uh, guests uh, coming up today. I forget who the other players are that we're talking to. So uh, make sure you're subscribing to YouTube. Again, the uh, the work never stops. The coverage never stops here at bronconationnews.com. So we just filled a 52-minute show talking basketball. And now we'll go uh, watch football practice and do some interviews and try to have some uh, interviews up and observations up on football this afternoon. So uh, it's been a fun April already. More news to come on the basketball team. We'll be following that. We'll uh, continue to get you ready for spring football uh, in the game, spring game uh, next Saturday. So uh, appreciate uh, all of you for your support. Again, subscribe if you can. It's just 50 bucks uh, or $6.99 a month, whichever is easier for you. Please support the sponsors. Tell your friends. Let's continue to grow this thing. I got big plans for BNN, and I can't do it without all your guys' support. So thank you for checking us out today. Truly appreciate it. Uh, we'll obviously be back. If any news breaks, check the YouTube channel for the uh, afternoon interviews. Otherwise, Jay Tust and I, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Again, 9 a.m. tomorrow, Bronco Nation News Live, 9 a.m. Mountain Time, that is. Jay Tust and I will um, continue to talk Alvaro Cardenas. We'll talk Boise State football and a lot of various topics. Should be a fun show tomorrow. So talk to you guys then. Appreciate it. Check my Twitter feed, at BJ Reigns, for some videos from practice today and some other stuff we got going on. So appreciate it. Go support the sponsors. Go subscribe. And we'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News Live at bronconationnews.com.